Never call out a narcissist. God says, do this instead. Narcissism is a topic that has garnered a lot of attention in recent years, and for good reason. Many of us have encountered a narcissist at some point in our lives, whether it's a parent, sibling, spouse, coworker, or friend. These encounters are often emotionally draining and leave us feeling confused, manipulated, and even guilty for wanting to confront them. The instinct to call out a narcissist to expose their lies and manipulation can be overwhelming. But as Christians, we are called to handle these situations differently. In this article, we will explore why calling out a narcissist often backfires and what God wants us to do instead. Before we dive in, if this content resonates with you, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more insightful discussions on dealing with difficult relationships from a biblical perspective. Be sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts below, and share this video with anyone who might benefit from it. Let's spread the word and build a community of support together. Before diving into how to respond to narcissists, it's crucial to understand what narcissism truly is. Narcissistic Personality Disorder, NPD, is a mental health condition characterized by an inflated sense of self-importance, a lack of empathy for others, and a deep need for excessive admiration. Narcissists often present as charming and confident, but beneath that facade is a fragile ego that is easily bruised. They are experts at gaslighting, manipulating, and twisting situations to always paint themselves as the victim. For those of us dealing with narcissists, the temptation to call them out and confront their lies can feel like the only way to reclaim our sanity. However, narcissists rarely respond well to confrontation. In fact, confronting them often leads to escalation, more manipulation, and increased emotional turmoil for the one attempting to hold them accountable. Why confronting a narcissist backfires? If you've ever tried to call out a narcissist, you may have noticed a few common reactions. They become defensive, they shift the blame onto you, or they play the victim. Let's break down why these responses are so common and why confronting a narcissist rarely leads to the outcome you desire. 1. Narcissists lack empathy. Narcissists are unable to put themselves in someone else's shoes. Their lack of empathy makes it almost impossible for them to understand how their behavior affects others. So, when you try to confront them, they cannot genuinely reflect on their actions and apologize. Instead, they will likely twist the conversation to make themselves the victim, further frustrating you. 2. They see themselves as perfect. One of the hallmarks of narcissism is the belief that they are flawless. Narcissists often have an inflated sense of self, which makes it difficult for them to admit fault. When you point out their shortcomings, they are likely to become defensive, shifting the blame onto others. This can lead to a circular argument where you end up being blamed for the very issues you're trying to address. 3. Confrontation feeds their need for control. Narcissists thrive on control. By calling them out, you are threatening their sense of power. Rather than engaging in a healthy conversation about the issue, they are likely to escalate the situation to regain control. This could manifest as shouting, gaslighting, or even emotional manipulation, leaving you feeling more confused and powerless than before. For they weaponize their victimhood. One of the narcissist's greatest skills is playing the victim. If you attempt to hold them accountable, they are likely to flip the script, making you out to be the aggressor. This tactic is particularly effective because it allows the narcissist to shift the focus away from their behavior and onto your reaction. Suddenly, you find yourself apologizing for your behavior rather than holding them accountable for theirs. These reactions are exhausting and can leave you feeling more defeated than before you tried to confront them. But there is good news. There is a better way to deal with a narcissist, and it's rooted in biblical wisdom. The Bible offers timeless wisdom for navigating difficult relationships, including those with narcissists. While the term narcissism may not be mentioned explicitly in Scripture, the behaviors and attitudes associated with narcissism are addressed throughout the Bible. God provides us with a blueprint for handling toxic individuals, and it starts with letting go of the need to confront them directly. 1. Let God handle it. Romans 12 verse 19 tells us, do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. 
This verse reminds us that it is not our job to punish or fix a narcissist. That responsibility belongs to God. When we try to confront or correct a narcissist, we are stepping into a role that only God can fulfill. The narcissist's behavior may hurt you deeply, but God sees your pain. Trust that he is working behind the scenes, even when it feels like nothing is changing. Sometimes, God allows us to go through these trials so we can learn to lean on him more fully. Rather than seeking justice on your own, place the situation in God's hands and trust that he will handle it in his time. 2. Pray for them. In Matthew 5 verse 44, Jesus instructs us to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This can be one of the hardest commandments to follow, especially when dealing with a narcissist. However, prayer is a powerful tool that not only invites God into the situation, but also softens our hearts. Praying for a narcissist doesn't mean you're condoning their behavior. Rather, it's a way of releasing your burden to God and asking Him to work in their life. It also prevents bitterness from taking root in your heart. When we pray for those who hurt us, we align ourselves with God's will and allow His peace to fill the space where resentment might otherwise grow. 3. Set boundaries and protect yourself. While it's important to pray for the narcissist, that doesn't mean you should subject yourself to continuous abuse or manipulation. Proverbs 22 verse 3 tells us, The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. In other words, it's wise to protect yourself from harm, especially when dealing with a toxic individual. Setting boundaries is not unchristian. It's necessary for your emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being. Jesus himself set boundaries during his ministry. He often withdrew from the crowds to pray and recharge, Luke 5, verse 16. If even Jesus, the Son of God, needed to set boundaries, we too are allowed to protect ourselves from toxic relationships. Some examples of healthy boundaries include limiting your time with a narcissist, avoiding sensitive topics, and refusing to engage in their manipulative tactics. Setting boundaries is not about punishing them, but about protecting your own peace and well-being. 4. Seek God's wisdom. James 1 verse 5 reminds us, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Navigating a relationship with a narcissist requires immense wisdom, and God is the ultimate source of that wisdom. Before making any decisions regarding the narcissist in your life, seek God's guidance. Spend time in prayer and in the Word, asking Him to reveal the best course of action. God's wisdom is perfect, and He knows the situation better than anyone. By seeking His guidance, you can approach the relationship with grace and discernment, rather than reacting out of anger or frustration. 5. Embrace forgiveness, but don't enable. Forgiveness is a central theme in the Bible, and as Christians, we are called to forgive those who have wronged us. Ephesians 4 verse 32 tells us, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. However, forgiveness doesn't mean allowing the narcissist to continue their toxic behavior unchecked. Forgiveness is about releasing the hold that bitterness and resentment have on your heart. It's about freeing yourself from the emotional prison that the narcissist's actions may have created. But forgiving a narcissist doesn't mean you have to allow them back into your life in the same way. You can forgive while still maintaining firm boundaries and protecting yourself from further harm. Discernment is a spiritual gift that allows us to distinguish between truth and deception. When dealing with a narcissist, discernment is essential. Narcissists are masters of manipulation, and without discernment, we can easily fall into their traps. But how can we cultivate discernment? especially in such emotionally charged situations. 1. Stay rooted in God's Word. Hebrews 4 verse 12 tells us, For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. God's Word is our greatest tool for discerning the truth. When we immerse ourselves in Scripture, we equip ourselves with the wisdom and clarity needed to navigate difficult relationships. Spend time daily in God's Word, 
asking the Holy Spirit to reveal His truth to you. The more familiar you are with the Bible, the easier it will be to recognize when someone's actions are out of alignment with God's will. 2. Guard your heart. Proverbs 4 verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. When dealing with a narcissist, it's crucial to guard your heart against their manipulation and deceit. This doesn't mean becoming cold or detached, but rather being vigilant about what you allow to influence your emotions and thoughts. Narcissists are skilled at twisting situations and manipulating emotions, often leaving you feeling confused, guilty, or even questioning your own reality. To guard your heart effectively, you must stay grounded in your identity in Christ, remembering that your worth is not defined by how a narcissist treats you, but by how God sees you. To guard your heart means practicing emotional self-care, maintaining boundaries, and not allowing the narcissist's words or actions to dictate your self-worth. When you know who you are in Christ, it becomes much harder for the narcissist to manipulate you or shake your confidence. 3. Surround yourself with godly counsel. Proverbs 11 verse 14 says, Where there is no guidance, a people falls, but in an abundance of counselors there is safety. When dealing with a narcissist, it's important not to isolate yourself. Instead, seek out the wisdom and support of trusted friends, family members, or mentors who can offer biblical guidance. They can provide a perspective that you might not see when you are emotionally invested in the situation. Godly counsel can also come from pastors, Christian therapists, or support groups. These individuals can help you process your feelings, validate your experiences, and remind you of the biblical principles you should cling to in these challenging relationships. The Spiritual Battle Behind Narcissistic Relationships While narcissism is a psychological condition, there is often a deeper spiritual battle at play in these relationships. Ephesians 6 verse 12 reminds us that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Narcissists often operate under the influence of pride, deception, and selfishness, all of which are tactics the enemy uses to cause division and destruction. 1. Recognize the enemy's schemes. Satan thrives on discord, confusion, and manipulation. He loves to use narcissistic individuals to create chaos in relationships and lead people away from God's peace. When dealing with a narcissist, it's important to recognize that the true enemy is not the person, but the spiritual forces at work behind their behavior. This doesn't absolve the narcissist of responsibility for their actions, but it does shift the focus from a purely relational issue to a spiritual one. By recognizing the enemy's schemes, you can approach the situation with spiritual weapons, prayer, discernment, and reliance on God, rather than reacting out of frustration or anger. 2. Engage in spiritual warfare. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 to 5 tells us, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. When dealing with a narcissist, you are engaged in spiritual warfare. The enemy will try to use this relationship to steal your peace, joy, and sense of self. But as believers, we have access to spiritual weapons that are far more powerful than anything the narcissist can throw at us. Prayer is one of the most powerful tools we have. When we pray, we invite God into the situation and ask for His intervention. Prayer also shifts our focus from the narcissist's behavior to God's power, reminding us that we are not fighting this battle alone. In addition to prayer, fasting, worship, and declaring God's truth over your life can all help to break the spiritual strongholds that narcissism creates. 3. Resist the temptation to seek revenge. In moments of frustration, you may be tempted to retaliate against the narcissist, to give them a taste of their own medicine, but scripture is clear. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Romans 12 verse 17. Seeking revenge or trying to manipulate the narcissist in a changing will only escalate the situation and leave you feeling even more defeated. Instead, God calls us to trust him with justice. As mentioned earlier, Romans 12 verse 19 reminds us that it is God's role to avenge, not ours. 
By letting go of the need for revenge, you free yourself from the cycle of anger and bitterness and allow God to work in the situation in His timing. Dealing with a narcissist can take a toll on your emotional, mental, and spiritual health. But there is hope. God offers healing and freedom, even in the most toxic of relationships. Here are a few ways to begin finding that healing. 1. Release the need for validation. One of the most common struggles when dealing with a narcissist is the desire for validation. You may feel like if you could just get them to see your side or admit they were wrong, you would finally feel at peace. But the truth is, narcissists rarely provide the validation you're seeking. Instead of looking to the narcissist for validation, turn to God. He sees your heart, knows your pain, and understands your struggles in a way that no human can. Psalm 139 verses 1 to 4 reminds us that God knows us intimately. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. When you seek validation from God instead of a narcissist, you release the need for their approval and rest in the knowledge that you are fully known and fully loved by your Creator. 2. Seek healing through forgiveness. Forgiveness is one of the most powerful acts of grace we can extend, and it holds transformative power for both the forgiver and the forgiven. However, when it comes to dealing with a narcissist, the concept of forgiveness can seem confusing and even impossible. After all, how do you forgive someone who continually manipulates, lies, or harms you? It's essential to understand that forgiveness is not about excusing or minimizing the narcissist's behavior, but rather about freeing yourself from the burden of bitterness and resentment. At its core, forgiveness is not a justification for wrongdoing. When you forgive a narcissist, you are not condoning their actions, nor are you saying that what they did was okay. Instead, you are choosing to let go of the emotional grip that their actions have over your life. Forgiveness is about releasing the control that bitterness can have over your heart, mind, and spirit. Bitterness and unforgiveness can be likened to carrying a heavy weight. The longer you hold on to it, the more it consumes you, impacting your thoughts, emotions, and even your physical health. Unforgiveness can lead to increased stress, anxiety, and feelings of anger, all of which can affect your well-being. By choosing to forgive, you are taking the weight off your shoulders and allowing yourself to heal. Forgiveness is a gift you give to yourself. It doesn't change the past or undo the narcissist's actions, but it changes your perspective and your ability to move forward. It allows you to stop replaying painful memories and to release the emotional hold those memories have on your present life. It's important to distinguish between forgiveness and reconciliation. Forgiveness is something you do for yourself. It's an internal process that does not require the narcissist's participation or acknowledgement. On the other hand, Reconciliation involves both parties and requires the offender to take responsibility for their actions and make amends. While forgiveness is always encouraged, reconciliation with a narcissist may not be possible or wise. A narcissist often lacks the self-awareness or willingness to admit wrongdoing, which makes genuine reconciliation unlikely. In these cases, forgiveness allows you to find peace without needing to restore the relationship to what it once was. You can forgive while still choosing to distance yourself or maintain firm boundaries with a narcissist. One of the most important aspects of forgiveness in the context of dealing with a narcissist is setting boundaries. Forgiveness does not mean allowing the narcissist to continue their destructive behavior in your life. In fact, healthy boundaries are essential for protecting yourself and preventing further harm. Boundaries are not about punishment or retaliation. They are about creating a safe space for your emotional and spiritual well-being. When you forgive a narcissist, you are releasing your anger and resentment, but you are also asserting that you will not tolerate continued manipulation or abuse. Setting boundaries might mean limiting contact, cutting off communication, or refusing to engage in toxic behaviors. For example, if a narcissistic parent continually criticizes or undermines you, forgiveness might involve acknowledging their behavior without allowing it to dictate your self-worth. You can forgive them for the hurt they've caused while maintaining firm boundaries that prevent further emotional damage. Jesus himself modeled the importance of boundaries during his ministry. Though he loved everyone, 
He didn't allow everyone to have access to him at all times. He withdrew to pray. He set limits on his interactions with the Pharisees, and he spoke truth without engaging in endless debates. Setting boundaries is a biblical principle that allows you to protect your peace while still extending forgiveness. Matthew 18 verses 21 to 22 reminds us of the ongoing nature of forgiveness. When Peter asked Jesus how many times he should forgive someone who wronged him, Jesus responded, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. This passage emphasizes that forgiveness is not a one-time event, but an ongoing process. When dealing with a narcissist, you may find yourself needing to forgive repeatedly. Narcissists often continue their manipulative behaviors, even after you've chosen to forgive them. Each new interaction may bring up old wounds, and each time, you may need to make the conscious choice to forgive again. This can be exhausting, but it is also a testament to the depth of God's grace working in your life. The key to continual forgiveness is to keep your focus on God, not on the narcissist's actions. It's easy to get caught up in their behavior, but when you shift your focus to God's love and His forgiveness toward you, it becomes easier to extend that same grace to others. Remember that God forgives us not because we deserve it, but because of His mercy. In the same way, we are called to forgive others, not because they've earned it, but because it frees us and reflects God's love. One of the misconceptions about forgiveness is that it requires forgetting what happened. But forgiving a narcissist does not mean erasing the memory of their actions. In fact, it's important to remember what happened so that you can protect yourself and avoid falling back into harmful patterns. Forgiveness involves releasing the emotional hold the past has over you, but it also involves wisdom and discernment. You can forgive while still remaining cautious and aware of the narcissist's tendencies. This awareness allows you to make healthier choices in the future, whether that means distancing yourself or setting boundaries to prevent further harm. The Bible is filled with powerful examples of forgiveness that can serve as inspiration when dealing with a narcissist. One of the most well-known stories of forgiveness is found in the life of Joseph. After being betrayed by his brothers and sold into slavery, Joseph had every reason to hold on to bitterness. Yet, when he was reunited with his brothers years later, he chose to forgive them, saying, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. Genesis 50 verse 20. Joseph's story teaches us that forgiveness is not about excusing the wrongs done to us, but about trusting God's greater plan. Even when people intend to harm us, God can use those experiences for our growth and His glory. By forgiving a narcissist, you are not saying that their actions were justified, but you are trusting that God can bring good out of the situation. Another powerful example of forgiveness is Jesus Himself. While hanging on the cross, suffering the ultimate betrayal and injustice, Jesus prayed for those who crucified him, saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Luke 23 verse 34. Jesus forgave even in the midst of unimaginable pain, setting the ultimate example for us to follow. At its heart, forgiveness is an act of obedience to God. When we forgive others, we are aligning ourselves with God's will and allowing His grace to flow through us. Colossians 3 verse 13 encourages us to bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Forgiving a narcissist can be one of the most difficult things you'll ever do, but it is also one of the most freeing. As you let go of the bitterness and resentment, you open your heart to receive God's peace and healing. You allow His love to fill the spaces that were once occupied by anger and hurt. Remember that forgiveness is not something you have to do in your own strength. God's grace is available to help you through the process. When you feel like you can't forgive, turn to Him in prayer and ask for the strength to release the bitterness. God's love and mercy are limitless, and He will empower you to forgive, even when it feels impossible. Once you've made the decision to forgive, it's important to focus on your own healing and growth. Forgiveness is a crucial step toward healing, but it's not the end of the journey. After forgiving a narcissist, take time to invest in your emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being. 
Surround yourself with supportive people who encourage and uplift you. Seek counseling or therapy if needed to process the pain caused by the narcissist's actions. And most importantly, continue to seek God's guidance and healing as you move forward. Forgiveness may not change the narcissist, but it will change you. It will free you from the chains of bitterness and allow you to live in the fullness of God's peace. As you release the emotional burden of unforgiveness, you will find yourself better equipped to handle future challenges and more open to the joy and blessings that God has in store for your life. Forgiving a narcissist is not easy, and it's a decision you may have to make over and over again. But it is also one of the most powerful steps you can take toward healing and freedom. By choosing to forgive, you are choosing to break free from the emotional chains that bind you to the narcissist's actions. Forgiveness is not about excusing their behavior or letting them off the hook. It's about freeing yourself from the weight of bitterness and allowing God's peace to reign in your heart. As you forgive, set boundaries, and seek God's healing, you will discover a new sense of freedom and joy that only comes from walking in obedience to God's call to forgive. Trust that God sees your pain and is working behind the scenes. Release the need for revenge or validation and allow God to be your healer and vindicator. With his help, you can forgive, heal, and move forward into the life of peace and freedom that he has planned for you. 3. Embrace God's plan for your life. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 is a familiar verse, but its truth is powerful. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. When dealing with a narcissist, it can be easy to lose sight of the future God has for you. The constant manipulation, gaslighting, and emotional abuse can make you feel trapped and hopeless. But God's plans for you are good. He has a purpose for your life that goes beyond the toxic relationship with the narcissist. As you release the narcissist's hold on your emotions and mind, you open yourself up to the freedom and peace that God offers. He can heal your heart, restore your joy, and guide you into a future filled with hope. Dealing with a narcissist is one of the most challenging relational dynamics you may face. The temptation to call them out, expose their lies, and seek validation can be overwhelming. But as we've explored, calling out a narcissist often backfires and leads to more pain and confusion. Instead, God offers a better way. By trusting God with justice, praying for the narcissist, setting healthy boundaries, and seeking his wisdom, you can navigate the relationship with grace and strength. Remember, the battle is not just relational, it's spiritual. Narcissism is often a tool the enemy uses to create division and destruction. But through prayer and spiritual warfare, you can overcome. As you release the narcissist's hold on your life, embrace God's healing and plan for your future. Trust that he sees your pain and is working behind the scenes even when it feels like nothing is changing. In God's perfect timing, justice will be served, and you will find the peace and freedom that only He can provide.